Hi, Michael Pellinger here for Room Now, discussing crystal disease reports at the 2020 ACR Convergence meeting. So up till now, I've been discussing research presentations about gout. But today I'd like to tell you about a really terrific state of the art talk that I saw on calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. The talk was given by Dr. Ann Rosenthal, the chief of rheumatology at the Medical College of Wisconsin, and one of the great important contributors to the science of this disease. Dr. Rosenthal divided her talk into three sections. First was clinical picture, the second was pathogenesis, and the third was treatment. In the clinical picture part, she discussed the evolving nomenclature of the disease, uh, the risk factors and triggers, including a possible entanglement that I didn't know about between osteoporosis and CPPD, uh, and the increasing use of imaging, including ultrasound and CT being helpful, MRI not useful at the present time, although uh, stay tuned. She also talked about uh, a joint project of the ACR and ULAR for new classification criteria, I should say for classification criteria because we don't have any that I think would tremendously help advance the field. Most interesting, I think though, was her discussion of pathophysiology. Dr. Rosenthal reminded us that the processes of inflammation induced by CPP crystals are quite similar to those we see and are increasingly understanding uh, in response to gout crystals. But where things di differ, of course, are in the crystals themselves, how they get there and how they form. Uh, urate and calcium crystals are very different. It turns out, interestingly, that cartilage has lots of factors that inhibit mineralization. And yet, in CPPD, deposition still occurs. Now, CPPD can be hereditary, sporadic with aging, secondary to metabolic diseases such as uh, magnesium um, abnormalities, and secondary to trauma. But the hereditary form, I think, has the most to teach us since two genes, one called CCAL1 and the other CCAL2, have been most strongly associated with CPPD and understanding what they do may be a key to understanding a lot of this condition. The CCAL2 gene encodes the protein named ANK, A-N-K-H-H for human in mice, it's just A-N-K. ANK is the transporter that moves ATP or pyrophosphate out of chondrocytes and into the extracellular fluid. And um, in some patients with CPPD, gain of function mutations in ANC therefore result in extracellular excess pyrophosphate, which can encounter calcium and form calcium pyrophosphate crystals. Uh, conversely, in experimental models, silencing ANC reduces pyrophosphate in the extracellular space. In contrast, the CCL1 gene turns out to encode osteoprotegerin, the competitive regulator of rank ligand that is well recognized in the osteoporosis field. And this may be an explanation for why osteoporosis and, um, and CPPD disease may be uh, linked in some way. So loss of function mutations lead to decreased osteoprotegerin expression and are associated with risk of CPPD. The biology here isn't complete, but it looks as though the loss of osteoprotegerin leads to increased numbers of osteoclasts and that some unidentified secretory product of the osteoclasts may then drive the chondrocytes to extrude ATP or pyrophosphate. And there you go, um, you begin to get the risk for crystallization. So these discoveries hold out promise for new treatments for CPPD disease, CPPD. For example, ANK inhibitors could reduce extracellular pyrophosphate and reduce CPPD risk. There are in fact are already examples of weak ANK inhibitors, including probenicid, that stand as proof of principle that ANK inhibition should be possible. And strategies to restore osteoprotegerin homeostasis could also be a potential strategy. So overall, we all know that CPPD is a slowly progressing disease. And honestly, there have been times when the science of CPPD has seemed to evolve equally slowly. But thanks to people like Dr. Rosenthal, progress is ongoing and progress is certain. 
Tune into Room Now for more reports on ACR convergence.